introduce, uh, I work at Griffith Union, a postdoc, uh, doing bioinformatics, uh, mainly genomics of non-model species in agriculture and aquaculture. And that will relate later to why I developed Shinotate, the non-model part of it. So Shinotate is a, so is a shiny app, as I said, to deliver processed and annotated transcriptome data stored in Shinotate database, right? Please know that I'm talking about delivering rather than performing the annotation analysis. There is very simple uh, analysis uh, functionality within, but mainly it's about delivering the results. So a bit of introduction. Um, RNA seq data or transcriptomic data in non-model species relies on the Nova transcriptome assembly. So we don't have a good reference genome that we can m align back our reads into and then just see how many we've got and perform gene expression. We need to first construct um, the assembly itself. Trinity is one of the most commonly used assembling packages with over 2,000 citations since 2013. It combines tools that are written in Java, C, and others, uh, which are wrapped around in Proscript. And it's very, very commonly used. Then you take the transcriptome, well, which is an assembly of transcripts, and you annotate them mainly using homology-based searches against uh, known databases. Then you perform as well a gene and transcript uh, expression, which is inferred by looking at the reads and estimating or actually counting the reads that map back to each transcript. Then we take the expression and the annotation information and we bind them together into insights of the biological uh, question, such as which genes are involved in a disease or in certain molecular pathway. Now, um, the way it's been done, usually all those annotation and gene expression tools, they all produce flat files. So you get all sorts of text files that are scattered all over your uh, storage or server or whatever, and then you need to pull them in together. Often done very tediously in Excel. If you're a bit more uh, programmatically capable and, and um, comfortable in R, you'll do it in R. But still, accessing that data is very hard for non-expert users. So uh, Trinotate is a framework that's uh, providing recommended streamline annotation and expression estimation procedures. So it's a package that comes along with Trinity and gives you step-by-step -step instruction. Do that, do the annotate blast annotation against a, that a Uniprot database and bring in the res will help you bring in the results into a database. Again, perform gene expression uh, estimation using RCM or Callisto, or, Eddie, or a few other very commonly used tools, and we're gonna help you bring the data in into a database. Then all the data is stored in a SQLite uh, database, which is great uh, if you can query SQL, all right? Or if you can handle R and dplyr verbs and pull in the necessary data and summarize it and visualize it, etc. which is what bioinformaticians do, all right? So I was happy with that. I was doing the job, uh, I think, pretty successfully. The problem was um, that when my boss wanted to look at a new gene, all right, or another student we had in our lab wanted to look at another suite of genes. So every time, they had to send me an email saying, can you pull out the, the information for that particular gene? And I had to see it. And, you know, not much of a trouble, but access the server, query it, bring it back, give it to them. It was working all right when I was working there, because they paid me for that and I was indispensable, or I thought I was, uh, until I stopped working for them. And, and then it became a problem both for me and for them. All right, so other tools that are, so we need somehow to make that data more accessible. There are a few available tools. One of them is Trinitate Web that comes wrapped with Trinitate. And it allows you to host a, locally, uh, a local web uh, server that produces graphics and expression analysis and very neat tables um, in Canvas Express JavaScript library. It is written in Perl, again, like in the entire Trinity, and uh, which makes it really, really hard to debug or to customize. I don't know if any of you have worked with Perl before, but it's a very cryptic language. Uh, another um, alternative is Trinotator, which is an R package. But the only thing that Trinotator does, it takes an Excel file that's been produced by Trinotate report services 
and parses it and gives you a table of summary of how many genes you got from each, uh, you know, for each annotation. So it's quite limited. Uh, so there was a need there for something else. Uh, the analysis pipeline of transcriptomic uh, data, again, in non-model species, you get your, you do your experiment, you, you uh, extract the RNA, you sequence it, and then you go through the, um, the bioinformatic pipeline, including Trinity, which you can see right there somewhere. Yeah, so Trinity is here. And then you annotate it through, as I said, homology searches uh, through all those databases. And you perform your uh, gene count estimation. And all of it goes into the Trinotate and then into a SQI database. And as I said, at the moment, uh, my uh, workflow was then to process it, access it, and process and summarize it through R bioconductor packages and deep ver verbs. So as I said, the rationale uh, for Shinotate is that Trinotate Web is the obvious companion to Trinotate, but it's not flexible at all. all right? So it allows you to upload annotation against the um, Uniprot database and against Uniref databases, and then against the PFAM. But you can, for instance, upload custom, customized BLAST tables that include the taxonomy, for instance, which is very, very handy if you're doing metatranscriptomics or if you work on plant pathogen interactions. Um, and as I said, changing Trinotate Web, for me at least, was impossible, entirely written in Perl, so it wasn't an option for me. Another thing is to allow non-expert users to interact with the data. Perform basic queries and retrieve annotation expression data, along with the underlying sequences. That's something that seems very, very trivial. You know, I'm searching for a gene, I found a gene, I want the sequence of it. And apparently, there's nothing that trivial. And if you ask any bioinformatician or look around, they say, oh, yeah, there's a one-liner awk thing that will get it. But tell it to my head of uh, institute supervisor, you know, she doesn't want to go into the server. She doesn't want to use Linux or R or whatever. She just wants to have it there. So I said, bringing power to the people. And then to provide a sustainable solution for long-term project with dynamic data collection. So I said, if there's some custom databases that want to annotate, Shinotate can accommodate that. If we've got multiple databases, Shinotate can allow us to choose which one we want and which table we want to use as our annotation table, which wasn't existing in previous tools. So as I said, this is what it does. Uh, it provides detailed and summarized annotation and expression data, and it can be very intuitively searched and downloaded. There's some very basic exploratory data analysis, mainly looking at uh, count data, so performing pr principal component analysis between our sample to allow us to identify um, cofactors, to identify biases, batch effects, etc. It can also allow you to include metadata. For instance, nowadays I document my bioinformatic analysis pipelines in my R markdown. But that is a place that can keep it right next to the data. So if someone else want to go and redo the, the analysis, it just goes there and looks at the R markdown and uh, uses the same, uh, the same analysis. And I'm maintaining a wiki on the GitHub, and I keep updating the documentation and tutorials. Because Trinotate, I found sometimes as well very, very hard to find what uh, script you need to run in order to load your relevant data. So I managed to pull all those data together and bring it in. So the implementation of it first, we need to prepare the data. And I recommend just using the Trinotate existing procedures. I don't want to reinvent the wheel. Maybe some people who have already worked with Trinity have already performed the Trinotate annotation. I want them just to be able to take that database and plug it in. But also allow annotation against custom databases. For instance, the NCBI um, non-redundant nucleotide and, and protein database, or the Interpro ones, which are very handy when we're working with non-model species. For instance, my I'll all right, I'll show you later when we look at the actual uh, information. We can also use a bit uh, extended tabular output format, as I say, including the taxonomy information in our BLAST results. Then we need to prepare, we can prepare, and we should prepare a custom uh, sample metadata table that include all the variables that go alongside our samples. 
where they were sampled, where they were, uh, which part of the of the of the species or the animal was uh, collected, the environment, the treatment, the sequencing. If there are different lanes, there might be some biases, batch effects over there that we can identify. And then we load the custom tables into the Trinity database. And again, I got all those instructions right there in the Shannon Tate Wiki. Hosting it, at the, currently I'm hosting it on a web ser on a cloud uh, server, Nectar, which is um, uh, the Australian um, e-research infrastructure for researchers, something like that, uh, which is a free for academics, and you can use it and host it there. Even though it uses Shiny, I use the open source version of Shiny, you can still include a user authentication and secure connection. A little bit of a workaround, again, all the information is provided there in the, in the wiki. Um, and then what only, the only thing you need to do is direct Chinotate to the path that contains your database. And since it's SQLite, it's just one file containing all the information. All right. So I'll show you a bit of an example. So this is the, uh, the main screen as we log in. First of all, we see the annotation table, which is the main thing that my users are interested at. And they want to be able to search it. Now, the example that shows here, and it will loop around, so don't worry if it, you misses it, it goes a bit fast, is that I can perform a search for a particular gene, say Bucalin. This is, uh, information is from Pearl Oyster. So it's a very important gene. Um, for actually pearl deposition, an organic deposition. And what you can see, uh, what you could have seen there, is when I use the uh, regular, like the standard Trinotate database, I looked for that G name, Bucolin, and it doesn't show up because I only get GIs there and accession numbers, which are very hard to, to work through. So I can go and there's the database customization button here on the left hand side. The, the green one, which basically drives which database we're accessing and what queries we're using for annotation. And it shows you, so you choose your database and it shows you all the available tables there, so you don't need to memorize where it's located. And then uh, I can just copy the right, for instance, the extended glass annotation uh, and put it in my query. And that will then update, load the relevant, yeah, it will load the relevant table, which I can then search for my gene. So this is a much more uh, extended table. I can search for my gene name, and you can search it for anything, transcript or e-value or anything, and it will filter it. I can highlight them and download them as FASTA, right? Which is a very, very basic functionality, and that was what, what my main users were looking at. Another functionality is to perform some exploratory data analysis. So if I go to the sample information um, tab, I can see my sample table on the left, and then it actually calculates the principal component analysis uh, on the fly using DSEC2 package, and you can set the parameters in PCA parameters, whether you want to work on the gene level or transcript. You can highlight the samples, and you see on the table which samples are there. And we can see, I don't know if you can, where the cursor is, that there's a triangle there among all the rectangulars. All right? So it clusters with its, well, I don't know if the wrong ones. So I can actually play with, how my, with my aesthetics on the fly. So change it to per individual coloring. And I can see that they're actually clustering not by individual, but their tissue that they came from. So indeed, that rectangular there, it's a bit of an outlier. It sits with its wrong, its wrong tissues. So it probably wasn't sampled properly. So I can go and exclude it from the sample table. And then all downstream analysis and gene expression would show it without that outlier. All right? And there's a very good way for me and for whoever looked at it just to identify outliers. Very, very simply, interactively. 
and very, very handy. And we can adjust the plot as well, themes and, and color schemes, uh, sizes, etc. Look at the other principal component, the third and the fourth, rather than just the first and the second. So these are currently the main functionalities. And some functionalities, all right, I'll go to future development in a second. Some projects that I worked on uh, using this framework uh, to identify defense response gene to pathogen in lentil, to identify uh, key pearl production genes in pearl oyster, uh, working with Paspali Pearls, the best pearls in the world, quite prestigious company here in, in Brisbane. Oh, Northern Territory, but they have a nice shop here. Uh, as well, looking for key uh, reproduction hormones in pearl oysters, sex change genes in, in giant groupers, and characterizing germ cell population in southern bluefin tuna. As you can see, all those species, they're quite important for the Australian industry, but they're very, very non-model species. Especially the mollusks, uh, the annotation levels are very, very low in the databases. So the more customized database I can work with, the higher levels of annotation I can get. So just future development that I'm going to add, uh, mainly bookmarks to enable the users to bookmark where there are the analysis and go straight back to it. And following a few workshops that I've seen here, uh, trying to improve performance is it by transferring it from SQL, SQLite database to Mon MonetLite, MonetDB Lite, and to implement client-side uh, interactivity using Plotly. All right, thank you very much. And if you want to implement something like that, just come and talk to me. I'd be happy to help you. Um, the question was whether you can add, host a local uh, copy and then work with collaborator. Yes. Well, it, you can host it in a central place and then anyone can access it. Yes. You know, you can, as I said, you can use uh, uh, password protection if there's a problem, but then you can invite whoever, like this China Tech is open to anyone with a password to access just because it's commercial data. Yes. 